All right, I hope it's recording. Yep, there we go. All right, and please note that all information that's shared during this virtual town hall is applied to the Academy as it's been developed to date. Uh, some aspects of this program may change as we continuously improve to um, work to improve our services here. And so with that being said, I would like to introduce the president and CEO of Tommy Nova Center, Dave Ward. Thank you, Liz, and uh, thank everybody for dialing in tonight in this chilly evening, early evening, and we appreciate your interest in the Academy. Uh, as Liz said, uh, my name is Dave Ward. I'm the president and CEO of Tommy Nova Center. I've been here for seven wonderful years, and I can tell you we are extremely excited about this Academy. We've been working really hard over the last 18 months or so, uh, really developing this Academy, uh, setting it up, developing the curriculum, and doing all the things you need to do to really develop a new uh, business, a new program model, and we're excited to share a lot of the details and information with you tonight. Uh, many of you have participated in our Early Youth Employment Services program. We've been implementing that for about six years. Uh, as you know, we are incredibly passionate about it. We, we love our, our youth program, and uh, we have invested heavily in this area, and uh, it is something we're going to continue to do but in much bigger ways. And by the end of next year, we'll be serving a thousand students annually through our EYES program. And we're extremely proud of that. And it's through this program that really the, the concept of an academy uh, came to surface because we asked ourselves the question, especially navigating COVID, uh, COVID is a great time for change. And so we engaged in some really deep, high level strategic discussions around what happens to students with disabilities once they finish high school, whether they get their diploma or they get their cert certification or certificate, what happens next? And we did a very robust uh, reach out to the community. We called with our stakeholders. We met with CEOs, we met with parents, we met with students, we met with employers and really engaged and asked questions on um, sharing the idea of the Academy and, and what they thought the Academy should look like. And we have our own vision, but it's important to engage the community as well. And it's through that engagement and through all that information we received that we have developed the Academy as it is today. I do want to be clear, though, the Academy is for youth and young adults who want to go to work. So it's not for parents who want their kids to go to work. It is for youth and young adults who truly have a strong desire to go to work. And um, we're certain that there are lots of folks that we could help uh, find a job, be successful, and gain the independence that comes with an amazing job and career. Now, before I hand it off to Liz, I do want to introduce some Tommy Nova Center staff that I know are on the call. Um, you may see Jalisa Davis. She's our Tommy Nova Center Program Coordinator. Bree Matoxin is our Tommy Nova Center Academy Program Manager. You're going to hear from her in just a minute or two. Christian Hardage is our EYES Program Manager North. It's waving right there with the big smile. Thanks, Christian. You see Cole Chase. Cole's our Program Manager. Cole, you're up there. Give a wave. Cole's got 40 plus years of experience in the rehabilitation field. We're incredibly grateful that Cole's on our team. Uh, I don't know if Beth Anders is on the call. Beth's our Director of Development. And I also want to introduce uh, David Hamilton. He is our uh, chief operating officer. He's been at Tommy Nobis for a couple of years now. We're certainly fortunate to have David on the team as well. And of course, uh, our, our director of programs, Liz Fennig, who started out here as well. Um, I would like to turn it back over to Liz so she can get into the meat of the program and, and um, start giving you guys the information that you're, you're eager to receive tonight. So thank you. All right, Dave. Well, thank you. I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen so that you all can see um, all of this information that we are presenting to you. OK, so here we go. Dave, can you give me a thumbs up that you can see it all right? All right, thank you. All right, so as we were um, formulating the idea for the Academy. And as Dave shared, we've been spending um, roughly 18 months just really planning and preparing for this. We wanted to really start with the why as we talked about our concept for the Academy. So, um, you know, you can read it here, but really I just want to reiterate that 
why it's so important that we're doing this. And, and the purpose behind this is that Tommy Nova Center believes that all persons deserve equal access to education, training, and employment opportunities. And through this academy, we will provide the education that young adults need to be confident and successful in their careers. And so when we talk about the five whys or the five Ws, we start with why, and then the who is young adults with disabilities. So these are persons that, um, you know, have been perhaps served through the EYES program, or maybe not even served through the EYES program, but are really struggling who have a disability and are struggling to find that employment. And so um, if, that, if that's you, we want you to consider applying for this program. The what, again, this is an accelerated vocational program and we will get into the specifics about what that means um, and how the program is going to be laid out. Um, in a minute. And then the when, our first cohort begins July 5th, 2023, which I know seems a ways away, but there is a lot of work still to do in terms of um, sourcing applications and reviewing all those applications and really selecting who will be a part of our academy here. And the where, obviously um, it says here located at Tommy Nova Center. So we are here in the heart of Marietta and our academy will be held here in Marietta. And with these five W's, we also decided that there's a six W and the six W is the wow. So the wow is that we are guaranteeing employment for every participant who um, joins the academy and, and we will work with those participants so that we are ensuring that they are employed before they part ways with us. And so here's just a very high level timeline of how we got here today. So um, as David mentioned, about 18 months ago, we were engaged with GXG and they were providing us some guidance on what as an organization we should really focus on and double down on. And we are doing so with our ICE program, but then they also provided us guidance on some opportunities that we could start with. And that's where the, the birth of the Academy came from. So that's where this idea was generated. Moving ahead, we have launched our website. So for those of you who have not had an opportunity to do so, we encourage you to go to tommynovacenter.org. And while you're at the website, there are uh, there is an opportunity to visit our Academy landing page where you can uh, view a lot of this information that we are, will be discussing today. And not only that, it's a great opportunity for you to um, just mark your calendars so that when our applications go live, which is November 1st, you can head on over to our website to see that electronic application um, and apply for the Academy. Additionally, our uh, plan is to have all of our students for cohort one identified by June 9th, if not sooner. And then just as a reminder, the Academy will open on July 5th will be the start of our first cohort. And I'm going to turn it over to Bree, who will now talk about the structure of the program. Good evening, everyone. I'm Bree Metaxon, and I was recently hired as the manager for the Academy. So the structure is broken down to three parts. First, there's the education aspect, which is three months curriculum based education here at Tommy Nova Center. Um, we'll have an instructor and a paraprofessional that is dedicated to those three months with our 12 to 15 student or participants. And then it will go into an internship, which will be three months of um, internship and community based instruction. We will have um, support fully on staff for the individual, whether it's in the workplace or here on site. And then employment. We have six months employment support that will be provided for each participant. Go ahead. Next slide, Liz. All right, so go ahead and break down the education aspect. It's going to be on site at the Tommy Noma Center here in Marietta. The schedule is Monday through Thursday, 8.30 to 2.30. We understand that some parents may need support. They may not be able to pick up their um, participant by 2.30. So we are considering networking hours up until 5 p.m. if that is something that we find there is a need for. Um, the focus area is going to be the life skills to support work independence, social skills for employment success, vocational skills, and community-based work. Um, we're going to explore careers by visiting different community um, employers. We're going to have hands-on learning and support completing a resume and the application for internship. 
So that's your first three months. Then we're going to move on to the internship. Next slide. The internship is going to be three months of community based instruction. So location could be anywhere. That's really up to the participant. We're not going to decide where the intern is. We're going to work with each participant to decide what's best for them, what they enjoy, what they want to do. Um, the schedule is going to be determined by the employer. Um, if they do not have to work on Fridays, we're going to have them come in. We're going to add some more educational support to make sure they're successful. On Fridays, they'll be here from 8.30 to 2.30. Again, if they have an intern that they have to work Fridays, they will not be expected to come into the Tommy Nova Center. That support that they'll receive during their internship is, um, again, overlapping to complete their interest inventories, inter internship exploration, and completion of applications. Again, individual placement, it's again tailored around what each participant's needs and wants are so that they're successful. We're not just going to place them somewhere where they're not happy. It's about them. It's fully centered around each individual person that attends the academy. And then once they are completed their internship, if they have not hired on by that employer, we will work another six months to make sure that they have complete support. Now that means that the location is going to be determined again by the employer. Schedule is determined by the employer. And we're not saying that they have to be there 40 hours a week, Monday through Friday. If all they can handle is maybe two to three days a week for 20 hours a week, then that's what we will help them achieve. Um, the areas of support is having an employment specialist work with them individually. So each cohort has its own employment specialist, meaning that they will make sure that the organization company that our participant, participant is working with is fully supported and that they're meeting the needs of our participants and back and forth. And although we will end at six months or we're saying we're offering six months to guarantee employment, if there's still need for us to be there, we will not just leave them. So they are guaranteed placement after the full year. And if there's support that's needed after, we will continue to support them. Thanks, Liz. Great, thank you, Bree. I appreciate that. All right, so here is a snapshot of what the schedule will look like moving forward. So as you can see in July of 2023 is when we will kick off our first cohort. And you can see that that cohort covers three months, July, August, and September. And then we'll move into the train phase, which is the internship from October, November, December, and then onward to the employee phase where we are guaranteeing employment and support during that time. Um, one thing that I do want to stress, which Bree just touched upon, is that if somebody is hired during the internship component of this uh, program, that is our ultimate goal. And so we want to make sure that they are employed, even if they haven't finished out the internship for three months, the ultimate goal is employment. And so we want to make sure that they are supported in that and are successful in their employment. As you can see, cohort two will not be starting right away. Um, we have very intentionally paused for a month so that we can assess um, how the first portion of cohort one um, went during the educational phase and we can make any modifications, changes. Um, you know, if there's things we need to add, things that aren't working out so well, we are giving ourselves an opportunity so that we can assess and make modifications along the way. And so cohort two will start in November of 2024. Cohort three will start in March. And then once we hit July of 2024, we will be going ahead and moving forward with a cohort every quarter. Um, each cohort will have 12 to 15 participants. Um, and so there's ample opportunity moving forward for every cohort. So there are some um, key dates that you can see on this slide as you're um, considering applying for the academy. All right, so who is your Academy team? Um, obviously, there's myself and Bree, who you have heard from. Um, additionally, we are going to hire an, a dedicated full-time Academy instructor. Uh, we are actively recruiting for this position as we speak, and this full-time instructor will be responsible for the delivery of those standards that we are identifying within our curriculum. Um, additionally, we are going to have a paraprofessional who will be within every classroom as well. We want to make sure that there is a good ratio of staff to participants, and we want to make sure that the staff are supported and our students, more um, importantly, are supported during this academy as well. 
Uh, what you also see in the middle there is an employment specialist. And so again, we are actively recruiting for the employment specialist to start um, at the beginning of the new, the new year. Um, every cohort will have its own dedicated employment specialist. And so this person um, will be working during all three phases of uh, someone's um, tenure with the academy. And so they will be with each cohort doing some inventories for interests and working with our participants to make sure that they're, the jobs that they desire, we're moving as closely towards those jobs as we possibly can and providing that ongoing support both during the internship and during the employment and thereafter. So what is the criteria for the academy? Um, again, young adults with disabilities those who are able to function independently for extended periods of time, um, much like going to school for some of our, um, our potential applicants, um, our participants in the academy will be at our site for many hours during the day and they need to be able to function independently for that time. Um, persons who apply need to have uh, personal behavioral and emotional control. Um, the big ticket here is that we need people who desire and are motivated to obtain employment. It's very easy because mom and dad, and I've got kids too, it's very easy for us to want this for our kids. We want to make sure that it's the applicant who really truly wants to obtain that employment. And lastly, uh, those who apply must be willing to either self-pay tuition, which we will get into details further on, um, or must be willing to engage with altern alternative financial support options. And again, we will be discussing those shortly. So the Academy application, um, it's a rather lengthy application, if I'm going to be frank with you. Um, what we're looking to do is get a really good picture of the applicant, and some we may know, um, but some we are applying for, are having applied for for the first time, and we haven't met you before. And so there are multiple components to the application. So uh, starting off, there is an applicant information. So that is basic information on who the applicant is, um, parents or guardians, uh, employment contact information and um, general, you know, information. Uh, then we move on to the educational history. And so what we're looking for is schools attended, whether they completed school and um, what type of diploma or certification, certificate of completion or GED um, did the, the applicant um, acquire. And we also want some information about that educational component for, um, for high school. How did they participate? Was, what were the biggest challenges with um, your educational history. Then we move on to employment history for the applicants if they have any employment history. And it's not a requirement, but we just like to know and have a good snapshot of if the applicant has tried to work in the past and um, how successful that was or was not, and maybe some barriers to that employment. Also, um, there is a personal support inventory, and uh, the personal support inventory is we prefer this to be completed either by a parent, a guardian, support system for the applicant. Um, in the event that the applicant uh, does live independently, they may complete it for themselves, but we're looking for a third-party perspective on um, the, the applicant and their abilities. Additionally, with our application, we are asking for three recommendation names. So on the application, we will be asking for those three persons and their contact information. Um, once the application is submitted, then we will do the work of sending out that recommendation to those respective three people um, and work on getting that back. Um, so all we're looking for are the names and contact information. And then lastly, on the actual application, there is a, a consent and signatures space as well. Um, when submitting the application, uh, we do ask that official high school transcripts are included, which includes the last IEP or any post-secondary program um, records that may uh, include some summary of performances or an educational evaluation that was conducted um, within the last three years or a most recent psychological behavioral evaluation. So we're looking for some sort of school or psych documents that um, give us, again, a good picture of the applicant. 
Again, we'll be asking for those three completed recommendations. And then in the event that the applicant does have a guardian, we will be asking for proof of guardianship. Um, what I wanna stress is that the application is an electronic application. The only way to submit this will be through the link that is embedded within our website or will be embedded in, on our website on November 1st. Um, but for everyone to be aware of, we are actually going to post a sample application on our website for review prior so that you can have a good idea of what are the questions that are being asked on the application. All right, so talking about the missions and application process. Um, again, stressing that all applications must be submitted electronically. Uh, once we have a complete application, which includes the recommendations, we will be reviewing those with a team um, within Tommy Nova Center. Those who we deem uh, moving forward within the process, we will schedule for an in-person assessment, and this is mandatory process. And what I want to pause here and talk about is that um, the, the thought and the idea of having an in-person assessment can cause some anxiety. And so I just want to ease some, some minds that this is what we do. We work with persons with disabilities. And so the idea behind this is not to increase anxiety, not to increase stress. Much of it will be um, more of a conversation to get to know the applicant. We may have some, um, some fun tasks and activities to do, but we're really just going to take some time to really get to know the applicant and um, their abilities. Uh, I just want to note that Academy staff may reach out for clarity. Um, if there's a question on the application that we weren't clear what the answer was or we need um, more information regarding the answer, we may reach out to you. And we do intend to provide frequent updates throughout the, the application process. And so even if your, your update on a monthly basis just says in process or under review, we will do what we can to make sure that we provide those updates regularly so that you're not left wondering. A couple things to keep in mind, um, especially when applying for cohort one, is that we are asking that complete applications require are, um, include all of the required documentation and recommendations as soon as possible. So we want you to submit those as quickly as you can. And the reason being is that we are utilizing a rolling application process, which means that we are not a college. We are not saying that application deadlines are uh, such as such a date. What we will do is as applications are coming in, we're going conti to continuously be reviewing those, um, scheduling those in-person assessments, and then um, applying, you know, for those who are applicable for the program, we will be assigning those to cohorts. And once the cohort is full, it means that we'll start filling up the next cohort. And so the application is a rolling process. And so those who may not be selected for the first cohort will still be considered for future cohorts. And for those that perhaps are not the right fit for the academy, we will provide additional resources or trainings if appropriate to make sure that applicants who were not selected can still receive some services. So here's where we break down the cost for participants. Um, as you can see, the total cost per person per participant is $10,966, but that's not what we're asking from our, uh, our participants to pay. We have two streams that um, participants can choose from. We have been engaged with GVRA, and they have actually written into our contract to provide funding and authorizations for services for our academy. So for those who are already um, involved in services with GVRA, that's great. You're ahead of the game. Um, for those who are not but choose to, we will work with you to help you get connected to VR. Part of the reason why we have opened up our application on November 1st is because the process to be um, accepted into GVRA can take upwards of six months. And so we wanted to make sure that those who needed to be connected with VR for um, services have the time to do so before our first cohort um, starts. And so for those who do go through VR, uh, who um, receive authorizations for services for the academy, the actual out-of-pocket cost for you is $0. 
uh, we have an alternative route, which is a self-pay tuition. And so that is for possibly the people who do not qualify for VR services for whatever reason, or simply would choose to self-pay. And for those, we um, are able to do a payment plan if necessary, but the cost out of pocket for self-pay tuition will be $1,966. So I just wanna note that Tommy Nova Center is so committed to this program and this model that we are committed to covering the difference of cost, which is $9,000 through other scholarships um, that we have been uh, fundraising for to support the, the cost of this program. All right, so we wanted to just pause a minute and talk about different case studies or um, individualized career paths. And so we have two different models here. First, I want to introduce you to Chloe. Chloe is a young lady with Down syndrome. She's 25 years old and she did complete high school and got a high school certificate. Her parents referred her to the academy because she's not had success in past positions. Um, a lot of it stems from a lack of interest. She also struggles with understanding personal boundaries, especially with coworkers. As you can see, um, Chloe has had past employment as a greeter at a superstore and then also as a line cook. And she refuses to wash her hands because it dries out her skin, which if you're a line cook, that doesn't really fly with a lot of restaurants. And it doesn't really fly with a lot of us as uh, consumers either. Um, Chloe does not have a resume, but she does love art. Um, she reports that painting is her favorite hobby. And when she's asked for her desired employment, she said that she wants to do an interior house painting. So how are we going to help Chloe at the Academy? Um, first, we're going to focus on those social skills trainings. We're going to talk about appropriate relationship boundaries. We're going to talk about how it's not appropriate to hug all of our friends, even though we really do love them and, and want to show them our affection. We're going to work with Chloe on her life skills training. So we're going to teach her the importance of hygiene, because if she is in a role where she does have to wash her hands, what do we need to do to talk to make sure that she's safe and practicing good hygiene? We're also going to work with Chloe on developing a resume. And throughout all of this, our uh, employment specialist will be working with her to explore employment opportunities based upon her interests. And we're going to align with her job goals. So for instance, if she's not going straight into an interior painting job, although it's a possibility, maybe we can look at work at a craft store. Maybe we can talk to Chloe and we can look for different work in a preschool as perhaps an art teacher. So we want to get Chloe as close to her desired job goals as we can so that she is successful moving forward. Next, we have Maurice. So as you can see, Maurice is an 18 year old young man on the autism spectrum. Um, Maurice is actually graduating in May. So Maurice is still in high school, but he has participated in the EYES program. And once he finishes in May, he wants to con be considered for the academy. Um, Maurice, as you can see here, he needs some help with those nonverbal communication skills. Um, he has uh, become overwhelmed when he's been searching for jobs, and he also has relayed to us that he's going to need to ride the bus to work. So that's always something that we need to be considering. Um, he has not been employed, but he loves sports and fitness, and his desired employment is a personal trainer. So how will the Academy benefit Maurice? Um, first off, we're going to focus on those nonverbal communication skills. We're going to find ways for him to improve his communication skills or, or find ways so that he can communicate with others while he's in a work environment. Um, we're going to work with him to find, you know, to learn those techniques to search for jobs and find jobs. We're also going to help him navigate public transportation. Um, maybe he's an expert because that's what he's done a, a good part of his life, but maybe he needs some support in those areas. Additionally, we're going to determine his ability to support um, and supports that's needed to pass his, a training certification. So does he have the ability to pass this? And if so, what can we do to support him in passing a personal trainer cert, uh, certification? And additionally, we're going to work with Maurice to find opportunities within his job goals. So perhaps he's going to find a job working in fitness and sports related organizations as a front desk at a, um, a gym or work as a, um, a, a I'm looking for it, like work at basketball so that he can be a referee or things of that nature so that Maurice can be as close as he possibly can to being within his career goals and interests. 
So the next steps, um, again, our open enrollment is starts November 1st. So our applications will go live on our website November 1st. The form, as you can see, can be found at our website, tommynoviscenter.org slash the dash academy. Or if you want to pick up your own personal device, you can scan that QR code right now and it will take you directly to our web page. The great thing with our web page right now is we have the ability for you to set a reminder in your personal calendar so that it will notify you on November 1st as a reminder to fill out the applications. And we also have a call to action here. Tommy Nova Center is a nonprofit organization. This program in and of itself will be primarily funded through um, our own internal fundraising efforts and grants. And we want to ask you to consider supporting the Academy. You can help us raise funds to provide others the opportunity to receive scholarships through Tommy Nova Center. We also want you to consider discussing an internship or employment opportunities for our own participants within your employer or you yourself can employ participants. Additionally, we ask for referrals to our program. If you know others who may benefit from this, share us with your network so that they know what we're doing here at Tommy Nova Center and they have the opportunity to apply right along with you or your son or daughter. Oh, I went too fast. And I'm gonna pause here for a moment. Um, our contact information is here. Again, my name is Liz Fennig and I'm the Director of Programs. And then uh, Bree Matoxin is the manager of our Academy programs as well. And I just wanna pause for everybody to write down this contact information. You are welcome to reach out to um, either of us if you have any questions along the way or along this process. And then we'll move ahead towards questions and answers. So if you have any questions or answers, if you could put those in the chat. Um, Bree, I'm not sure, are there any uh, questions that have come through? Yes, there are actually. Um, one question that came through is, what is the age when he or she can start the academy? So again, we've been intentional in setting it at young adults. Um, we don't want to dictate what that age is. So if um, I would say if they're 17, 18 and they feel appropriate to apply for the academy, they could do so then. Um, but we don't want to have a cutoff at, at the end on the end side. Obviously, somebody who's 60 years old would not be considered a young adult. But if you're in your 20s or even early 30s, but appropriate for the program, we want to we want to encourage you to apply. Our next question is, what if he or she cannot talk, communicate clearly during the interview process? Again, we will work with um, all of the applicants on that process. We have activities, so perhaps if they're not able to talk clearly or if they um, have trouble with some speech or language, we will have activities to see how much comprehension they are able to do, and we will find other ways to communicate um, if they are either nonverbal or have limited um, verbal or communication skills. Um, this is the last question. Oh, hold on. Can you share this presentation? We are going to um, share this on our website. We have been intentionally recording it. And so we will share this presentation on our website. Um, and if there is, um, if you're asking for the actual slides, we can look at ways to distribute those as well. All right, next question. Is employment guaranteed and will there be a follow up after a certain period of time? Yep, so employment is 100% guaranteed. And I just wanna stress that um, we're not just looking to get somebody employed and then leave them. Uh, our goal is to work with them and support not only the individual who's being employed, but also the employer. And um, with that, we are providing up to six months of wraparound support and services. And so, for instance, if um, one of our participants um, finds a job, they're employed, and after two weeks or three weeks or even two or three months, it doesn't work out, then we will re-engage to make sure that they find um, more successful employment. How many participants are in a cohort? Yeah, great question. So each cohort will have 12 to 15 participants. All right. And if not admitted in the first few cohorts, does he, does the applicant need to reapply or will she, he be automatically considered for all cohorts? 
we will be in communication with that. Um, there will be a certain point where we will have to, you know, stop reviewing um, past applications because information and things can change. But for at least the first year, um, we would not ask you to be reapplying every single time for each cohort. What if your student is working towards a GED and also due to struggles in the school does not have three references? Would this disqualify them? They have participated in the EYES program in July. Yeah, so recommendations can be anybody in that person's life. So if they have a teacher, if they have a coach, if they were part of the Boy Scouts or the Girl Scouts and they have a leader, um, somebody at the church, somebody who knows them on a personal level um, would be a good recommendation. But yes, we are requesting to have at least three recommendations. Next question is, my son has wanted to do video game design for years. Is he a candidate? He is at Warm Springs right now. Yeah, so um, possibly. Uh, we are actually, um, as an organization, and what Dave alluded to um, at the start is that we have been working very hard for the last 18 months, and we have de been developing um, a rather lengthy list of, of strategic partners, funding partners, and industry and employment partners. And amongst those industry employment partners does include um, persons in the technology industry. So we have um, conversations and we have engaged with different community businesses who do focus on IT, scripting, Java, all of that stuff that I really know nothing about. But um, yeah, we don't want somebody to not apply for this because of a certain uh, career pathway. That is all of the questions. All oh, right. Oh, Keep wait, sorry. <laughs> Shelly said you have just made my life and his. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> That's it for now. All wow. right. Well, again, we wanted to thank everyone for um, joining us. We have been recording this so that we will um, be able to share this with people. You can watch it again if you choose to. And we will, um, if you are interested in the PowerPoint, perhaps you can email Bree directly so that we can send this out to you directly as well, um, just as a reference point. But we're so thankful for the opportunity to share this information with you. We are so excited about this Academy. I can't stress how much um, we can't wait to get the doors open and have our participants um, here and in our classrooms so that we can continue to, to help people towards their employment goals. And without anything else, I appreciate everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye-bye. <laughs>